Hey everyone, Matt from Dirt Motor Rider here. Really excited to be back to talk to you guys about basically anything and everything with an engine in it. Uh, today, for example, we've got my new 2023 KTM 300 XC. Just want to talk to you guys about the bike, give you guys some of my impressions, and then kind of go into a little bit more in-depth detail. I'll show you guys what I've done with it. I'll show you some things I like, some things I don't like. There is a ton of reviews out there on the KTM 300 XC, and honestly, they're all really good. Everyone's got their own opinion. Uh, everyone's got some quirks that they're trying to figure out with their bikes, but ultimately, my goal is to not show you guys you know, much of a riding video. There's tons of those out there. I'm just gonna kind of give you guys a quick overview, show you some things that I've done to it, and what I'd like to do in the future. So in case you haven't heard, in 2023, KTM went through a pretty significant overhaul of their two-stroke engines. For the longest time now, we've been dealing with what's called TPI engines, transfer port injector engines. And there's some great videos, there's some great details that show exactly how these bikes work available throughout YouTube. Now, in 2023, we've gone to throttle body injectors. And essentially, the biggest difference between that, the two biggest differences that you're gonna see as a, as a rider, is that first off, with TPI, you're gonna have oil injection. You're not gonna have to mix. So last year, a 2022 model bike, you had TPI oil injection engines. Um, I had a 2021 300XC TPI. Bike was great, I had no issues. Um, I'm not a hard rider. There's guys out there that ride these bikes so much harder than I do, but the power is enough for me. I have a blast on it. I don't need that much more. I really enjoyed the maintenance free. Now in 2023, which is what this bike is, you have throttle body injections. So your bike's carburetor is working like a traditional carburetor. You're mixing your gas. You're not having oil injection anymore. You're mixing your gas and that's delivering the fuel to the engine, creating the power. Some people have said is with the TBI engines, and I haven't owned this bike long enough to really feel the difference. And again, I'm not a professional rider. I'm nowhere near that level. I am a wreck guy. But what is being said is the new 300 XCs are a little grunt, a little bit more grunty. So there's some really good videos out there where folks are talking about, wow, there's just a lot more power delivery on the new TBI engines. Now the flip side is, and I ride in an area that is, you know, it's, it's hell, it's rocks, it's roots, it's just slop. It's a, it's a more difficult and challenging area than like riding out in the desert. Each presents its different obstacles, but ultimately I am going probably half as fast as most guys are going that have wide open trails. I'm riding single track rocks and roots. And I'm a little concerned because what I'm hearing is that the rocks and roots on the 2021 300 I had, I had so much low end torque, I could just walk it right through the woods. I'm kind of hearing the opposite on these new bikes. Is it gonna make a difference for me? I'm, again, I'm, I'm very much a wreck guy. I don't think it's going to, but I'm sure guys that are trying to shave off minutes and seconds, you guys are gonna see a big difference between the two engines. So let's talk about reliability. I buy a $10,000 bike, or anyone that buys a $10,000 bike, you're hoping that, yeah, you're gonna get a bike that's gonna just kick butt and be super snotty and just get you through anything, but you wanna make it out of the woods on time and enjoy your day out there. So what I'm hearing is, um, you know, I got a late model TPI engine, a 2021. Ultimately, that bike was great. All the kinks were worked out, I had no issues. I didn't have any power valve issues. Everything worked really, really well. I've always had this golden rule of never buying a bike that's like a first model release year. And I went against that when I got this bike. Um, there's something about KTMs and the 300 XC. I wanted to try something different and I was excited to uh, take on the opportunity of getting a new bike. I've quickly realized though that I've had some issues um, and that I've also done some research on the early TPI bikes and folks that have had those bikes had a lot of issues too. So ultimately, I'm really hoping to document any issues that I have so that first off, I hope it helps other people out there, but second off, just to kind of keep some kind of trail of information 
that can be sent back to KTM, that can be sent you know, to future riders so you guys know what to look for. All right, let's talk about the first issue that I discovered on my KTM 300XC TBI. First thing I noticed, backed the bike out of the trailer, threw it in the garage, and started it up, and first thing I noticed right off the bat was there was an FI code. So KTM has this, I don't know if it's new or not, it wasn't on my 2021, but it's on the 2023. It's basically a service code, and it's an FI light. And it's basically saying, hey, bring it in for service. So long story short, my bike's not even an hour old. I'm looking at it with a blinking code. So, you know, what is this? I reached out to my dealer and they had no idea what it was. Didn't really seem like they were too inclined to really get back to me right away. So I said, forget, it. I'll call KTM tech service. And believe it or not, like I had to leave a message, but they got back to me within about four hours, which honestly, I wasn't even, you leave a message, I'm not even expecting someone to call me back. But long story short, the guy in the other line was like, well, that's probably, I think I had to tell him it was five blinks or whatever. And the guy said, that's because you don't have the newest update. Either you or someone at the shop hit the start button while the bike was running and it flashed the error code. So like, okay, that's kind of ridiculous. Like that should have been figured out at the factory, but whatever, not a huge deal. Um, more frustrated that my dealer had no idea what the code was. So little concern there. So that was my first issue that I had discovered. The next issue that I had on my KTM was literally after just putting around in my backyard. The dealer told me, so these bikes, the premix in them is supposed to be 60 to one. My dealer did a 50 to one premix, which I mean, honestly, I kind of liked the idea of a little extra lubrication. I didn't think there'd be an issue, but after only, I don't know, 20 minutes of riding this bike, I immediately had a, a fog plug. Now, don't get me wrong, I was going slow. I was you know, just going nice and easy in the backyard, trying to break the engine in. Um, so my intent wasn't to just grip and rip, like some, some guys do. Um, just wanted to really break it in easy. My goal is to get to 100 hours before I'm switching pistons around. So that was what happened to me. And almost within an hour, I had a fog plug. So a couple of BR-80Ss later from the local auto parts store. And I've got a bunch in my pack because this thing is, I got a feeling I'm gonna go through some plugs. There's been some comments on forums that the bike is I don't know, set to run rich. I, I don't know how you could do that on a premix side. There's, there's no detail in the manual that says that, but my opinion, um, you probably do want to run this thing 60 to one because the plug that I had was totally black. I mean, it was like oil injection on an old snowmobile black. That's what it reminded me of. So keep that in mind because when you're out on the trails and you do get a foul plug, this is not like a, you know, a, a KX 125 where you can pop the plug off in two seconds. You gotta take the seat off, you gotta take the tank off, which is pretty easy to do, but you know, that's another level of, you know, my 2021 TPI engine, I took that plug off and it was perfect. It looked like it was in my vehicle, uh, my car or my truck or whatnot. So just something right off the bat kind of concerned me and, and maybe when I bring this bike, which I'm supposed to do next week to get it mapped, to have the, the update completed, maybe I won't have that issue. Maybe I will though. So, so not really an issue, but this was something that just ticked me off when I first picked up my bike. You buy a KTM, you drop 10 grand on a dirt bike, whatever it is, 11 grand really. And you know, you want a manual. These bikes are not meant for people that aren't gonna be riding them and working on them. Every person that gets a KTM that I know has, you know, everyone passes along the same information. You buy a KTM, you strip the thing, you grease the hell out of it, you basically rip it apart and rebuild it. And, and that's what everyone does. And, and, that's, and if you don't do that, you know, you, you're taking a little bit of a chance. But that's what most people do. They take these bikes apart, they grease them, they get them, just so that they're in phenomenal shape to hit the trails and go and, and, and not run into issues. So with that said, when you get a bike like a KTM, 
you know, years ago, and, and I know folks have probably griped about this that have bought one of these that have had KTMs in the past, you'd get a nice binder with a nice owner's manual and you have a couple tools, um, you know, especially for the air shock, you, get, you have the pump, which you still get, but you don't get a manual and you don't get the binder. So the binder, whatever, it was kind of more novelty. I liked it because I could keep it in my truck and not worry about anything getting, you know, ripped up. I'd keep all some records in there, but it doesn't come with an owner's manual. Basically it says download uh, the owner's manual from the website, which you can do and it's not a big deal. And this is probably a, a small potato complaint of mine, but KTM should give us an owner's manual. So what I did was, um, it was in one of the, I think it was in a Facebook post, a guy mentioned you could get a KTM type manual um, off someone from eBay. So this guy on eBay will print it and thermally bound it, whatever, but it does look like one of the old KTM manuals. So I took him up on this and I have a um, owner's manual. It's similar to what, what we had before. It's actually a lot better quality, but I don't know, I'm an old man. I like, I like being able to look at it on paper. Um, having it on the phone is cool if you're out and I think about it, so someone who hasn't had to um, change a spark plug in one of these, you're taking that tank off and you're probably looking at it and you could go a wrong direction. The tank has a quick release on the fuel tube, which does make it pretty easy to take the tank off so you're not pulling rubber off and re, you know, recrimping stuff. So I think about that and I'm like, well, if I'm, if I'm on the trail, I like having it on my phone, but you're paying 11 grand for the bike. Just give us an owner's manual and, and give us a binder too. I think a lot of us like that, but that's enough of the small complaints with, uh, with what I originally discovered with the bike. All right, so one of the other things I found that I was like a little shocked about was I pulled the, the bike out of my trailer and I looked at it and I go, Oh my God, like something's wrong with the front forks. And I'd love to hear if anyone else had this issue too, but the forks, the suspension, like in the front forks, it was like this bike was half its size to the point where it wasn't even lining up on the kickstand. And, and I'm gonna throw in a picture here so you can see what I'm talking about. So I called uh, the company I bought the bike off of and they said, oh, they probably forgot to put air in the shocks, which they totally did. That was, that pissed me off, probably beyond belief. Like, you know, you mean to tell me that you didn't even, you know, check the air in the, the air shocks on the, on, the, uh, on the forks for this bike? So again, that, that was another thing that I was a little, little shocked about. So a few things I've added onto the bike after I made the purchase was some of the bulletproof products that's made for the KTM 300XC. The protection that you can get with bulletproof is, is amazing. You know, it not only ensures you that you're going to get home after a day of riding, but it's also gonna give you a little peace of mind if you lay the bike down or if you hit a rock or if you're climbing up a hill and you gotta lay, you know, you gotta do something. So ultimately what I did was I bought the front and the rear disc protectors for my bike. I also purchased the throttle body protector as well. And at the time I didn't have the linkage protector. I recommend anyone getting that. I had that on my own bike and it was amazing but I ended up getting the KTM uh, skid plate linkage protector for, for this bike as well. Hey everyone, so that concludes my thoughts and initial impressions of the 2023 KTM 300 XC. Like I said, I haven't been driving this that much, but in the next week or so, I'm, I'm really kind of hoping to put out a few hours. I've got a ton of other videos in mind here. Uh, my son just got a CRF 110 and my youngest just picked up a Polaris Outlaw 70. So I'm gonna be talking about those probably in the next week or two, but thanks so much for swinging by. And if you made it this long to the end of the video, thank you and um, hope to talk to you soon.